Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. Today, with us, we have the President of the Honorable Dr. Sri Hichamadin Tun Hussain, Acting Minister of Transport, Dr. Azaruddin Abdurrahman, General Department of Civil Aviation, Ahmad Jawari Yahya, Chief Executive Officer of Nation Alliance System. We have Tan Sri Kaya Inspector General of Police, Royal Malaysian Police Force. Ladies and gentlemen of the members, to start off the press conference this evening, I hereby call upon the Honorable Dr. Sri Shamadetun Hussain, Acting Minister of Transport, to deliver a statement. Honorable Minister, if you please do the honor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The search for MH370 continues. As I stated at yesterday's press conference, this is now a truly international effort. Our focus remains the search and rescue operation. We are working on narrowing the search corridor by firstly gathering satellite information, second, secondly analyzing radar data, thirdly increasing air and surface assets, and fourthly increasing the number of technical experts. We are also taking further steps to address the needs of the families at this very difficult time. I will start by giving a brief operational update. And as we have said, the search for MH370 involves diplomatic, technical and logistical challenges. Accordingly, the main technical team organizing the search and rescue operation has been broken into three groups. A diplomatic team led by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, an assets deployment and logistic team led by the armed forces, and a technical group retaining overall operational control, which is led by the Department of Civil Aviation. On the diplomatic front, all 26 countries involved in the search and rescue operations have verbally agreed to assist the operation, and Malaysia has written to all countries formally requesting cooperation. A number of assets have already been committed and are awaiting diplomatic clearance to begin operations. Once we receive formal clearance, we can then speed up the deployment of assets along the search corridors. As I stated yesterday, although the search is still coordinated by Malaysia, our partners are increasingly taking the lead in their own territory and in agreed search sectors. We welcome this. And again, we'd like to thank all our partners for their continued assistance and support. I can confirm that we have received some radar data, but we are not at liberty to release information from other countries. I appeal to all our partners to continue volunteering any of and all information that could help us with, with the investigation and the search for MH370. Regarding reports that the plane was sighted in the Maldives, I can confirm that the Malaysian Chief of the Defence Force has contacted his counterpart in the Maldives, who has confirmed that these reports are not true. I am aware of speculation that additional waypoints were added to the aircraft's flight routing. I can confirm that the aircraft flew on a normal routing up until the waypoint Igari. There is no additional waypoint on MH370's documented flight plan which depicts normal routing all the way to Beijing. On the police investigation, as the Inspector General of the Police confirmed, the case has been classified under Section 130C of the Penal Code. All passengers, crew and ground staff handling the aircraft are being investigated. We are sharing all information relevant to the case with all relevant international investigative agencies that require it. We have received passengers' background checks from all countries apart from Ukraine and Russia, both of which had nationals on board. So far, no information of significance on any passengers has been found. Local and international expertise have been recruited to examine the pilot's flight simulator. Some data has been deleted from the simulator, and forensic work to retrieve this data is ongoing. I would like to take this opportunity to state that the passengers the pilots and the crew remain innocent until proven otherwise. For the sake of their families, I ask that we refrain from any unnecessary speculation that might make an already difficult time 
even harder. I would like to announce that in addition to the team that is already on the ground, Malaysia is currently assembling a high-level team that will immediately travel to Beijing. The team will give briefings and updates to the next of kin on the latest situation on the search and rescue plans. The team will include representatives from the Prime Minister's Office, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Royal Nation Air Force, the Department of Civil Aviation and Malaysian Airlines. The team will be led by Lieutenant General Datuk Sri Akbar bin Haji Abdul Samad, RMEF, Air Operation Commander of the Royal Malaysian Air Force, assisted by Ahmad Niza bin Zulfaka, Director of Air Traffic Services, Department of Civil Aviation, and will include a senior 777 pilot. We will persevere. Our immediate focus is the search and rescue operation, and we are pursuing every means possible to narrow the two search corridors. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, we'll take the Q&A session. We'll start with the local media first. Good afternoon, Dr. Sri. from RGM Radio. Okay. Uh, semalam, selepas 11 hari di CSNR, Juru Cakap Tentera Thailand memberitahu bahawa radar udara tentera udara mereka di sebelah selatan mengesan pesawat UKI MH370 pada uh, pada laluan bertentangan dengan laluan sepatutnya dilalui oleh pesawat tersebut. Dan pada, pada masa yang sama, uh, dia uh, Dan pada masa, uh, masa sama, Panglima Tentera Udaranya, masa Prajin Yutong Memberitahu bahawa radar di Kusara tidak mengesan pesawat tersebut uh, Adakah maklumat ini telah disahkan Dan bagaimana pula perkembangan dengan misi di Korea Utara selepas penjelahan ini Sebab itulah saya dalam apa jua maklumat yang kita terima Mesti dapat korporasi daripada pihak-pihak berkenaan Dan saya sendiri telah berjumpa dan bukan berjumpa men, uh, menghubungi the permanent secretary the ministry of defense of thailand general nipat tonglek sebab tu kita tidak boleh mengesahkan uh, apa yang telah dinyatakan tadi sama ada dia atau tidak yes hello uh, Bila agak dia maklumat yang dibayangkan akan dapat diperoleh oleh pihak polis And then mengenai SDR kita ni Selepas 30 hari, apa yang akan dilakukan Saya akan Saya baru berjumpa dengan uh, delegasi dengan uh, dan juga satu uh, pasukan daripada Perancis uh, Pagi tadi Di mana uh, mereka mempunyai pengalaman dalam uh, uh, tragedi Air France di mana dua tahun uh, diambil untuk menghubungi untuk mendapat uh, black box berkenaan dengan uh, pesawat uh, Air France tadi dan uh, maklumat-maklumat dan pengalaman mereka uh, akan uh, membantu kita untuk membuat keputusan yang uh, uh, selanjutnya simulator tidak simulator Kena dengan uh, simulator itu, pakar-pakar uh, uh, forensik kita termasuk dari cyber security, dari MAS sendiri dan juga pakar-pakar dari luar negara sedang meneliti ini. Dan uh, apa, apa yang dimaksudkan dengan uh, uh, yang dah padam itu adalah uh, log, data log kepada permainan uh, flight simulator dalam simulator itu. Adalah uh, beberapa orang yang pakar dalam bidang. Okay, please your question, sir. Uh, on your on your phone, sir. I'm uh, Shantou from KZ. On the request for data info from different countries, are you requesting for the other raw data from this? Um, I've said that uh, yesterday that the area that we're covering north uh, and south corridors is huge 
and our immediate focus is how to reduce the siege areas from these two corridors. And the way to, to move forward in reducing it is in four ways that we have decided on. One is gathering satellite information, as I said earlier. Secondly is analyzing the radar data as it becomes available, whether it's primary or secondary, commercial or military. Thirdly is increasing the air and surface assets. And it depends very much on when and how we do it. Uh, and how we are actually going to do the, the search um, will depend on what assets are going to be deployed. And finally, increasing the number of technical experts, which includes the French delegation which I met earlier today.